Hey guys, welcome to the slippery slope that is astrophotography. I've made a couple of changes here out of necessity. Uh, going back to the refractor, um, as you know, I have a video about some of my recent findings on focusing, and so I got the Pegasus Astro Focus Cube 2. That's a subject of some recent videos. Um, and recently, I was out again playing with the focuser and actually trying to get some imaging done and I noticed I was getting some dew buildup that shut things down uh, prematurely on the uh, on the lens so I got a do not do strap here and because that's going to necessitate a controller and yet another AC to DC uh, converter I've decided to bite the bullet and swap out my power and data distribution box here. I have this stuff in a box just so dew doesn't form on all the electrical equipment. But basically I've taken out about, I don't know, four or five DC converters and I bought a Pegasus Astro Ultimate Power Box 2. I really like the quality of the product from them for the Focus Cube and uh, this Power Box 2, version 2, uh, looked to fill the bill for a lot of other parts that I have. and. Perhaps if this had been around and I had made the decision to do this sometime back, I could have probably would have paid for itself practically. So basically, I do have AC power coming in, the orange extension cord coming into this single AC to DC converter, which then plugs in and powers the uh, Ultimate PowerBook 2. Now from here, the blue data cable goes into a powered. Uh, USB 3 cable that goes back to the house. So I've still got those two cables, the data and the power cables. Meanwhile, the camera, the, the ASI 1600 and its 12 volt DC power uh, cable for the um, cooler, both come into here and plug into the a USB 3.1 port and 12 volt power supply port, uh, respectively, in the uh, power box two. Um, so you can see that I've got, there's the data, there's the hub here. This is, this is the uh, cable coming out and going back to the house. And this is in the 3.1, USB 3.1. So that's coming from the ASI 1600, which also carries the filter wheel and the uh, guide camera. And then I've got the mount and the focuser plugged into the USB two, the two USB two ports. Now, there is also behind here, you can't see it here, but there's a variable voltage uh, port here that I intend to use. And I'll plug a cable from here as I get the right connector and plug that in to this guy here to power it, the uh, powered USB cable. And then that will allow me to remove this uh, AC to DC adapter that I'm using for it. Um, and then eventually I'm going to make the change and that and unplug that, which is the AC to DC adapter for the mount, and I'll just power the mount off of uh, one of the four 12 volt power supplies that I have on the other side of the, the um, power box two here. Meanwhile, I've got a dew heater, so and the, uh, the software that comes with this acts as a controller, so I've got a controller and the power for the dew heater is also encompassed in the power box two. And the power box too comes with a sensor here, which measures the temperature, humidity, dew point, etc. And so that feeds information back to the software controlling the ultimate power box too, that uh, controls the power to the um, dew strap, which I've never had before. So I'm I'm anxious to see how that works and if I have to uh, monitor it closely throughout the night. Um, a couple of other issues: the addition of a number of cables is severely uh, complicated the um, cable management here. Uh, one thing I've noticed, for example, I put this little guy here. I'm trying it out. I've done this before, decided it wasn't that useful with my Smith Cassegrain. I'm going to try it again here because the added weight of the focuser over here, plus the imbalance of load from these knobs and whatnot, and just the design of the mount, I think, uh, creates a tendency for the telescope to fall over uh, to the to the left as you're standing behind it and this balances out this mass offset mass here balances out a little bit it doesn't fully compensate now cable management yeah it's a little more complicated now um, a couple of things I've noticed is that if 
the USB 3 cable gets jostled a little bit in the 1600. Doesn't have to get pulled out, but just jostled. The, the camera will freeze up and not download images. And so I've created a little clip here and bolted it to my dovetail plate. And then the cables are all attached into there. So hopefully that provides a nice, stiff connection. So if there's any tendency to pull back in here, this stops it over here. And so hopefully that will eliminate that problem. Meanwhile, I've got the cable from the Do Not coming down. It plugs into a extra long phono cable here that goes back into the uh, box over here and then ultimately plugs into the power box too. I've got the DC power for the uh, the uh, ASI 1600 and for the focuser here along with the two data cables, the um, cable for the focuser and the USB cable for the ASI 1600. And so they are grabbed with enough service loop here to allow for deck motion. And then that's just held off over here, clipped off to this strap I have around the, uh, around the RA motor. Um, then the cables come down and they're supported on this strap. So hopefully any RA motion will pull on this and any deck motion will pull on this and then nothing pulls on that. And so hopefully that will work. Um, this is the temperature sensor for the focuser. That's what I'll be using to monitor temperature. Meanwhile, the software that comes with the Ultimate Power Box 2 will be looking at data from that forward sensor there. That's about it. I've got a lot of first here. I did try plugging this in and did try everything out, so everything was working inside. And those are the famous last words. We'll see how it goes. There are, like I say, there are a lot of firsts here, and that's usually the recipe for some form of disaster. But um, we'll see how it goes. All right, so we're inside the laptop. I'm going to bring up the Ultimate PowerBox software. It's not connected. This should connect it. That's the first good step. Now notice that the power is off. The mount has a power, is assigned to a power port, 12 volt DC power port. But as I showed you in the video, it's not connected yet. The ASI 1600 is, so I can turn that on. The focuser is, so I can turn that on. Uh, the dew heater is attached. And let's see. I'd like to see something come up with that. We should be getting some temperature readings here. The data ports are on ASI 1600 and the, and the uh, USB 3.1 port and the mount and the focuser and the USB, the two USB 2 ports. Okay, crisis averted. I have managed to plug it in. I, <laughs> I had the uh, temperature and humidity sensor plugged into the focuser motor output, which I'm not using. Fortunately, it wasn't powered, so um, I didn't damage anything. Otherwise, I might well have. Looking at the power now, you can see we have dew point, relative humidity, and external temperature from that sensor. Up in this corner, we have the temperature from the focuser uh, sensor, that other independent sensor. So they should be within about a half a degree C of each other. Meanwhile, I think we'll reestablish this as automatic dew uh, heater operation. Okay. All right, so I've slewed back over to the veil, and now I'm guiding. I went off to Deneb to check focus. It had slipped a little bit. Temperature's been dropping, um, so I think we're okay there. I've re-entered the filter offsets that I... Uh, came up with the first time I had the first time I used the focuser they seemed to be accurate they were confirmed here at least for the oxygen filter so I think I'm comfortable with that for now over here you can just barely make out and maybe I can bring this up a little bit more uh, you can see the oxygen part of the veil uh, that I'm I'm currently uh, imaging with and down here is the PhD guide graph of course notice how the deck motion the deck guiding is very good remember that i deliberately offset the p misaligned the polar alignment and then it initially drifted off and so i'm only guiding to the south so their only corrections are to keep it going 
and correct for that that tendency to want to push to the north all things considered this is going uh, very well the ra is a little uh, wobbly uh, the total is 0.87 which is not bad and at this focal length it'll be just fine uh, another thing that i'm doing um, well, before I go off of that, uh, this screen over here is the uh, control panel for the Ultimate PowerBox 2, and it just shows you at a glance what's going on with the uh, various pieces that are plugged in here. You can see the temperature, 9.4 from that sensor. I've got a temperature of 10.3 from the focuser sensor. Um, it's been running the dew heater pretty well. It's not up to maximum, but it's at 193. It's been hovering around 188, 193. Um, so it's certainly, uh, it's fighting something off. I hope it works. <laughs> this is my first time using a do, a do, pa a do uh, heater. So um, we're going to see what, uh, see how well it works. And this automatic mode seems to be working fine. It certainly knows more about what it needs to be doing than I do. So I think that's, uh, that's good. One thing that I ran into in some of my testing that I was doing earlier is that uh, well, actually, I ran into this during some recent imaging. Uh, I would actually lose contact with the mount. The mount would would shut off, not shut off, but it would. I would lose USB contact to it, and and it would no longer be registered up here in the be communicating with APT. And I think what was happening is that as a large image was being sent down from the imaging camera, it was stepping on the uh, images being provided by the guide camera. At that time, I was using a guide. I was guiding at a rate of one second, and it was downloading the full image from the guide camera each second. So there was a lot of information in addition to the commands being sent to the mount and, and information coming back from the mount. And I think it, it just overloaded the USB channel and the, uh, the USB cable. So what I'm doing this time is I'm taking advantage of the subframes within... Uh, PhD2. So it's only downloading a very, very small section just around the guide star alone. And I'm hoping uh, that significant reduction in USB traffic combined with going up to two seconds as a guiding interval will uh, avoid the problem I was having with the mount. So that's one of the issues that I'm, I'm uh, eager to, to assess here tonight. Okay, so what are the takeaways from my recent adjustments to my setup? Well, first of all, I think the Ultimate uh, PowerBox 2 is, is a great addition to the system. It simplifies things quite a bit, although it doesn't necessarily look like it when I show you that uh, video of the box. But it does replace quite a bit of items that uh, are fairly costly if you add up the uh, cost of each item. And I think that pretty much comes to what the uh, PowerBox 2 uh, costs. But you get a significant amount of setup, and it's a it's a great piece of hardware. So I think it's a it's good quality control and cost control if you jump in and get the Ultimate PowerBox 2 right off the bat. And for a lot of you, uh, it's compact enough and lightweight enough to actually be mounted on the telescope or mounted on the mount. Uh, I'm not doing that because in my setup, I've got one mount, I've got one camera system, and I've got three telescopes, and I've got to kind of interchange them. And so I don't want to have one setup that's where everything is attached and difficult to detach. So that's why I have that uh, the ultimate power box in that in that uh, container that sits outside the mount, and then I have longer wires that go up to the telescope. At least that's the way I'm doing it for now. Um, at first, when I first plugged it in, I, the Ultimate PowerBox didn't see the ASI 1600, but it did see the filter wheel and the guide camera that were plugged into it. Um, I, I reinstalled the drivers and everything worked fine, so I'm gonna chalk that one up to must have been user error. Maybe I didn't uh, didn't load all the uh, drivers in the first place. I don't I don't know, but everything worked fine once I got past that little hurdle. And so if you do have that issue, if you do purchase the this component and have this issue just try reinstalling all of the drivers and there may be multiple driver uh, sets to install so uh, keep uh, keep an eye out on that the software is is excellent you've seen how it works uh, there are uh, it's a great uh, capability to be able to cycle power to individual usb ports and to turn on and off the power to individual 12 volt uh, power supplies also there is a timer I don't believe I covered that in the video, that, that you can tell the uh, 
power box to simply shut down power to everything at a given time of day. So for example, you know you're going to be done imaging at six o'clock in the morning, then you could just have it power down everything and, and there's no danger of, of, uh, of anything going awry because some component has power when it doesn't need the power. But anyway, it's a, it's a great piece of software. I also particularly like the dew heater controller. It works fine. Um, have not, haven't had any issues with dew since I installed it. And uh, you can certainly see it monitoring the uh, temperature and humidity and ramping up the power to the dew strap uh, on an uh, as needed basis and then turning it back down when it doesn't need it. So it, that's working very well. Now, there were some other issues I had to resolve here having nothing to do with the installation of the Ultimate Power Box. Uh, one of, of them that I've had on and off intermittently is a failure to download an image uh, from the ASI 1600. And I've, I've, I believe this is caused by a slight jostling of the USB 3 connector into the back of the ASI 1600 because maybe the cables shift during the night as RA and DEC move. So what I've done, uh, showed you in the video, is implement a, a screwed on clip that will uh, hopefully fix the relative position of the cable uh, plugging into the back of the ASI 1600 so that it can't be moved uh, with a slight cable uh, movement during the during the night. So far it's worked. Uh, it's been an intermittent problem so you never know if you fully have it uh, solved but certainly I didn't have any problem in the last couple of nights of last three or so nights of imaging. The second problem I've had that's just more recent and odd is that I I would occasionally get the mount would the CGM would disconnect from the system and no longer be visible to or accessible by the guiding software or uh, APT. Obviously, when your mount decides to uh, stop talking to the other pieces of software, you're pretty much done until you fix the problem. And I I'm, I'm assume that this problem is is caused by excessive USB traffic. One of the things that I was trying out for the past couple of nights is using the subframe option within PHD2, which allows PHD2 to only download a small set of pixels right around the guide star and not download the entire image and obviously that's probably going to be the biggest demand on your usb uh, usage because the if you're guiding at one second intervals or two second intervals without the subframe option you're downloading the entire image every second and i could certainly imagine how that might uh, tax the system when you're also trying to communicate to the mount uh, communicate to the focuser communicate to the to the uh ASI 1600 and downloading those large images ever so often. So I've been using the subframe option and it seems to work. I haven't had the issue. Uh, fingers are crossed though, so we'll keep track of that. But if you do have those issues, you might try the subframe option. It seems to be a pretty good way to uh, severely and significantly reduce the uh, USB traffic requirements. Well, by this time I've gone through and I've been on this this process of going back and collecting Oxygen 3 data on many targets where I noticed that it had gone out of focus, uh, which is the subject of uh, many videos now on, on focusing. Uh, and I think by this time I've, I've managed to recover most of the out of focus data on a, on a large variety of targets. Uh, I just need to get to work and start doing some processing. Uh, meanwhile, tonight we're supposed to have some good weather and I'll try to finish up the M33, get started on the M8281 pair, and maybe IC410 as well. So lots of work. I just need to get now some time to do some actual processing.